In this video, I'm going to look at the condensation reactions of amino acids. So a good place to start is obviously the definition of a condensation reaction. So you can see it's written up on the board there. So condensation reactions are when two small molecules react together to form a larger molecule with the elimination of a smaller molecule such as water. So that's the link with condensation, the water byproduct. So if we have a look at amino acids now and think about the functional groups that we've got, we need to form a water molecule. So you can see here we've got an OH group as part of the carboxylic acid group. And to make a water molecule, if we can combine this OH group with a, another hydrogen, then we've got our H2O, our water molecule. Well, you can see here on the right hand amino acid, we could take a hydrogen from this NH2 group and form a water molecule. And that's exactly what happens. So we'll take the OH group off this left hand amino acid and we'll take the hydrogen from the right hand amino acid. So there's the water molecule and we'll join the two bits of the amino acids, what's left of them together and form our larger molecule. So there's the condensation reaction model there. If we look at the displayed formulae now for the two amino acids that I had before, we had alanine and glycine. So remember these are alpha amino acids the NH2 group and the COH group are bonded to the same carbon. So they've got this same general structure with this carbon, with a hydrogen on, NH2, COH, and then this variable R group. So in alanine, the R group's a methyl group, and in glycine, the R group's a hydrogen. So the way that I did that was I took the hydroxyl group from alanine and the hydrogen from the NH2 group on glycine and that gave me the water molecule for the condensation reaction. And there's the product of the reaction. So these, this is the larger molecule. And obviously there's the smaller molecule, the water molecule. Now I just want to point out an important feature within this molecule. I've just put a dashed line there. This special group here, this linkage, is called a peptide. So the peptide bond or the peptide link is a C double bond or connected to an NH. So this is the peptide and because this has been made from two amino acids, this type of molecule here is known as a dipeptide. So the di bit doesn't mean there's two peptide linkages in, it just means that it's made from two amino acids. So you can get things called tripeptides, tetrapeptides. So obviously a tripeptide is made from three amino acids and therefore would have two of these peptide linkages in. Tetrapeptide made from four amino acids and it would have three peptide linkages. Now you can see in this example I've taken the hydroxyl group from the COOH, the carboxylic acid group, from the alanine molecule and I've taken the hydrogen from the NH2 group of the glycine molecule and ended up with this dipeptide molecule here. Now I could have easily done that the other way around and taken the hydroxyl group from the glycine molecule instead and the hydrogen from the alanine and that would have given me this dipeptide molecule which is actually different to the previous one. So we'll just have a quick look and see how they're different. So if we just focus on the C double bond O part of the peptide link. So bonded to the left of that we've got a CH2 group and that's obviously come from the glycine molecule. If we look at the first one, then to the left of the C double bond O we've actually got a CHCH3 group Obviously that came from the alanine molecule. So that makes this dipeptide different to the other one. So when you join together two amino acids, 
you can actually make two different dipeptides because there's two ways effectively of joining the, the two molecules together. Now, because of the fact that we can join together amino acids differently, in other words, we could take the hydrogen from this one and the OH from this one, or vice versa, there's various different combinations possible for the products. And then if you factor in as well, the R groups are different as well in the individual amino acids, then this gives rise to an absolute myriad of possible um, products from these condensation reactions. So these protein molecules that are formed by the condensation reactions of um, amino acids, there are huge, huge numbers possible. So we could make something that looks like that, or that, or that, or that as well. So that's just from three amino acids. And we'll just finish with this. There's a couple of words I'm sure you're familiar with. Polypeptides, they're just molecules that have been formed by many amino acids joined together by peptide bonds through condensation reactions. And proteins are typically 50 plus amino acids joined together by those peptide bonds. And just a reminder there that this is how we draw out the peptide bond. So we tend to put the C double bond O pointing in one direction and the NH pointing in the opposite direction. You wouldn't get marked down if you'd put that H up there, but it just looks better like that.